So, in 2009, I kind of underwent a weird phase where I started getting more into modern rock music. Well, it was modern for that time period, anyway. Come to think of it, there weren't too many bands I can think of right off the top of my head, with the exception of Digital Summer and, of course, Burn Halo. Title drop, yo. I first heard them on the soundtrack for SmackDown vs. Raw 2009, which is also where I first heard the band that I did my first ever episode of backtracking on, that band being Project A6. Damn, I discovered a lot of music that I liked through video games when I was in my mid to late teens. Good times. Uh, anyway, it's time for a shorter episode than usual, as these guys just about reached the three album limit. It's backtracking, and this time it is Burn Halo. We start off with Burn Halo's self-titled debut. It was initially slated for release in 2008 through Island Records, but that label elected not to release it, after which it was then released in 2009 through Rockhead on, uh, and Warner Records and produced by Zach Malloy. It's also the first album that I listened to by them. That's right, this is one of my rare, not blind episodes of backtracking. As I briefly mentioned in the intro, I first heard them on the soundtrack for a video game. The song I heard from said video game was Save Me, which is a damn good song. I actually made a Montreux song for my great character who I based off of Dante from the DMC games. <sighs> good times. En enough of that, onwards. Uh, the album itself is not really too bad for a debut. It was one of the few albums I listened to in full not long after its release before I actually started doing just that near the end of 2010 and through 2011 and to the present day. Imagine if I started backtracking back then, I'd probably be hitting triple digits in terms of subscribers by now. Oh, um, I forgot to mention, I've now hit 20 subscribers, so a massive shout out to that. Uh, <laughs> back to the album itself. Uh, it's a really good mix of often used modern rock style that was used at the time, uh, mixing elements of alternative metal, hard rock, and really good fast grunge elements. The production of it sounds really good, I'll admit, and it pays off quite well. I think that's the main reason that some people started hating that late 2000s, early 2010s modern rock boom. It was so well produced to the point of it being overdone at times, and most of the singers could be damn near indistinguishable from one another. But Burn Halo manages to book this trend just a little bit, adding a, this unique little southern flavour to mix things up. It's kind of like what a cowboy would listen to in the modern age, I think. Uh, I feel like that little twinge makes all the difference for the band, and it carries on into their next two albums, which I'll cover when I get to them. The album has some solid writing to go with this production, but it does suffer from a little bit of an imbalance issue in terms of tone. More, more of the songs are heavier and, in my opinion, catchier, but the slower songs aren't outweighed by that. The first two songs in the album are quite heavy sounding and much faster paced, but the next two immediately after are slower and add some acoustic guitar elements. It can throw you through a bit of a loop if you're not prepared, so just try to keep that in mind when you give the album a listen for yourself. But the album is really not that worse off for it, and whilst it does fall into the typical tropes of modern rock at that time, it's still a really good first outing. James Hart is a great vocalist, showcasing a good range for a rock singer, and his different tones of voice help guide the mixed pack of songs. Uh, Neil Tymon provides some great riffs and solos, Chris James' bass work is anything to sneeze out either, adding a good choke and groove here and there, and Daniel Dare's drumming is pretty solid. Luckily, two of them were going to be in two of a lot of people's favourite bands, and Daniel was with Nickelback at the time. Oh, and Sinister Gates appears for two of the songs and does a great job. Uh, standard songs include Save Me, Annie Jo, So Addicted, Do Little Girl, and my favourite in Taylor Rounds of Lost Highways. I believe Vinay Joe and Doi Little Girl are the two that Sin appears in. Uh, anyway, Burn Halo is Burn Halo is a really good start for them, and whilst it does occasionally step into those familiar one rock waters, it's careful not to drown in them. I can recommend it, but prefer yourself with the changes in tone and sound if you decide to give it a go for yourself. It might confuse you a little bit first. We then follow that up with their, um, we then follow that up with their 2011 sequel, Up From The Ashes. Sticking with Rocket, but switching producers from Zach Malloy to Colby Wedgworth, the album also presents us for some lineup changes, so let's get to those. Neil Timon is replaced by Joey, Rox Kuna, and Brandon Lynn on lead and rhythm guitar respectively. Aaron Barlow takes over on bass, and Daniel Ladeau hath been replaced for D by Dylan Ray. A quick thing that I went to that I want to mention is that these five appeared in the music video for Doyle Logo from their debut album, but Jerry, Aaron, Dylan, and Brandon were not official members at the time, I don't think. There's a lot of confusion there, and obviously some of the members have come and gone by this point, but they were listed as the personnel of this album, whereas those listed for their debut were members of Burn Halo at the time, before they all got replaced. I don't know who was touring and who was official, but there you all go. Uh, if you are doing more research into it yourself, you can go nuts, I just don't want to. Uh, now, when I first heard this album, back in 2011, I didn't really give it a full appreciation at the time. And it's a perfectly good album, it's even great in some places, and it does buffer out some of the odd balance issues that their debut has. Uh, and it makes a five member lineup, you know, it, it certainly fits Burn Halo style. My problem with the album mostly lies in the production and the lyrics. Don't get me wrong with the lyrics, there is the usual Burn Halo themes of redemption, lost love, and struggles of faith. 
But there are a few times where the thugs can get a bit repetitive and the rhyming can feel a bit forced, as in forcing one word to rhyme with another even though they don't sound the same or have the same ending. The band also seems to have this weird trouble in letting go of the cowboy sound that they showed off in spades when the first album, with tinges of it showing here and there in some songs, and they're completely abandoning and abandoning it in others. Also, good god does it drag on from time to time. The third track on the album is 3 minutes and 30 seconds, but it gets extremely repetitive and sounds way longer than it should. The album itself is almost 15 minutes long, about 3.5 minutes longer than their debut, and the length of the album of album 2 is not really filled out that well. I appreciate them going for more heaviness, but the production makes the guitar sound kind of terrible from time to time, and James' vocals just wind up taking over a lot. The drumming of Dylan Ray, whilst good in places, feels so by the numbers and overproduced from time to time. Joey's an excellent guitarist and showcases some awesome solos, but when it comes to some brand new intro riffs, it's hard to tell most of the songs apart. Aaron's bass isn't that bad, but when all the other guitar work is drowned out enough to also sound like a bass guitar, it's difficult to distinguish it. It's kind of the habit that the production has, it just makes the guitar sound really dull, you know? Anyway, standout songs include the title track, Tear It Down, Rest My Soul, Alone, and my favourite, In Dakota. And From the Ashes is an album with a lot of potential, but its overproduced has terribly forced and repetitive lyrics, and sounds even more like the band tried to do an A7X impression than on their debut. I can't really recommend this one, I'm afraid. Uh, like I said, I didn't really appreciate it fully when I first heard it, and there is still some problems with it, I think. Just me. Lastly, we reach their third album, The Wolves of War. Well, just Wolves of War. Released in 2015, there are some changes for this one. They did rock out for E1 Music, and the only members who remain in change in terms of lineup at this time are James Hart and Joey Rocks. Uh, they also managed to get the... Uh, they managed to get funded by fans for the most part, which is always a good sign, uh, which is why it took so damn long. Uh, new members are bassist Chris Bishop, bassist John Ruther, guitarist Brian Frost, and drummer John Duarte. I couldn't really find any info on the producer of this one, so I'm going to do what I always do when it comes to that and just assume that the band did it because it's a crowdfunded thing. I That's a safe thing to, to assume, you know? Uh, the album is a really good statement, considering that it was four years since Up From The Ashes. I remember eagerly awaiting Walls of War, and when the title track got released in 2014, I got so damn hyped. Unfortunately, due to even more learn-up changes, and I think label changes as well from time to time, the album was delayed for just that little bit longer. But fuck me, was it worth it? Oh yes, it was. Another change in the sound, as the band started playing around with heavier stuff. Uh, now, I know that it's nothing new, and it certainly wasn't at the time of 2015, but for Burn Halo, it was the fire up their ass that they needed after four years away. It works so well, and it's a great showcase that the band needed. In fact, when I was grabbing my favorite albums of 2015, I added this on that list. Of course, I didn't make a video for that because my laptop at the time was fucked and I didn't want to risk recording videos, so I settled up posting the album's cover and writing a huge ass paragraph about why I liked the album so much as I did for the other nine. With that in mind, I'll try not to repeat most of what I said back then about the album. Uh, also, since I couldn't find anything on the producer, I also couldn't find anything on the album's length, but let's call it a healthy middle between their debut and Up From The Ashes. The production, by the way, is damn good, adding great effects to the guitar especially. Uh, I just remembered that I did mention heavier elements, but never delved too much into that. Well, let's do that. Uh, James starts screaming at, for the first time, it just sounds amazing. The instrumental look is heavy as all hell, and the lyrics don't really pull any punches either, adding a lot more swears. There wasn't any on it from the ashes, there was some on the debut, but there's a lot more in Walls of War, it just sounds cool. Dealing with familiar subjects of the band and also adding lessons of betrayal and the loss of someone eating away at you, there's a lot more swearing as well, which was kind of needed. It was present on their debut and completely annoying this and dropped from the ashes, but I just couldn't say it because, well, Walls of War is their heaviest album, so why not use some heavy language to go along with it? As I mentioned, James Hart starts screaming and he sounds really, really good. Even adding some nice little inflections of range to his clean singing, Ryan Frost provides a good bunch of scales and riffs and Joe can certainly shred, proving to be one of the most underrated guitarists in modern rock in my opinion. Chris's Bakers work is pretty good, adding a good groove to the breakdowns and John's streaming shows some really good timing and balance between Timbal and Snare work. Uh, standout songs include the title track, Fuck You, that's one of the songs I'm not saying fuck you, uh, Enemy Inside, Dying Without You, and my favourite in the album's closer, You Are The Damned, which I maintain to be Burn Halo's best song. <laughs> Walls of War is Burn Halo's heaviest release, showcasing some new stuff, awesome breakdowns, great solos, and brilliant production, and badass lyrics. I can recommend this one indeed, it's really, really, really good. So, that's the end of the episode. My favourite album by them is obviously Walls of War. It's so heavy and it just gets stuck in your head, and it's really, really good. 
Uh, my least favourite was up from the ashes. Shoddy production, repetitiveness, and imbalance of the instrumental work let's down what's otherwise not that bad of an album. It's just at the bottom of the pile in terms of burnt halo stuff for me. You know, uh, also I forgot to mention the fact that James left last year to reform his old burnt 18 visions, being replaced by a dude named TJ Chopalis. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, anyway, that should about wrap it up. Join me next time where I'll be doing another two-part episode. Next time, it's Demon Hunter. I'll see you all then, and thank you for listening.